to Phoebe's Handmade Dress. This is a podcast all about uh, creating your handmade wardrobe by knitting and dressmaking and basically making all the things. I'm Stevie. Um, if you're a new viewer, thank you for subscribing. I've got a load of new viewers of late, so hi to you guys. And I've got a lot to show you today, so let's get on. Okay, it's really, really warm in here. It's 21 degrees, so I've just got to get it out of the way because I'm melting. FOs. Rocaine is finished. I'm so excited, I can't believe it. Um, it's taken me about three months, but this is the Rocaine sweater by Christina Danahy. It's from Pom Pom. I think it's issue 16. And it is done! Um, it's knitted in Stranded Dye Works Castaway DK, which sadly she is discontinuing, but I'm sure that Amy will have another DK base. Um, it's knit in the Blue Rinse colourway. So I'll give you a bit of a close-up of it. Here's my... It's all knit and pearl stitches in the trees at the front, and then there's a rig and furrow along the sides. Um, then it's just knit in the round with a few extra pretty details on the way down. So it's knit bottom up. I had to do a huge amount of ribbing at the bottom because it was really, really short on me. Uh, just to show you the back. It's exactly the same as the front, just higher. Uh, yeah, I did about four inches extra ribbing on the bottom because it was way too short, as you can probably see from where the ribbing starts. Um, I was only meant to do about this much ribbing, but it was way too short. So what I might do is I might stitch it here to add a little bit more um, so it's not popping so much. But other than that, really love the fit. Yeah, so I'm really loving the fit of this one. I was really excited to finally show you it because you guys have seen it for weeks. Um, I love the pattern. The pattern is really interesting. It kept me going. There was enough interest in it, but also enough stock in it to keep me excited um, and comfortable. All knit and pearl stitches, so nothing too complicated. Originally, I thought this was a uh, cable, but it isn't. It's all knit and pearl stitches. So it feels like it's really super fancy, but not too fussy and too difficult to knit. So really pleased with this one. Um, I knit the sleeves just about to length, so 17 and a half inches. It just about hits me at my knuckles. Um, normally sleeves are too short, so I was really excited by that. Yeah, not much more to say on this one other than I'm so excited that it's done and I cannot wait until it's cooler to wear it because whew, it's hot in here and I'm gonna have to swap over. So I'll see you guys in a second. All right, so I have taken off my rocane because it is 21 degrees and it is way too hot in here to be wearing a jumper. But I thought I'd give you a better close up of it off of me. Can you tell I'm proud of it? I'm really quite proud of this. So that's the back, that's the front. I'm in love with this tree of life design at the front and the rig and furrow, it's so cool. And I love this yarn, you guys. Totally adore this yarn. It is, as I said, Stranded Dye Works, Castaway DK in Blue Rinse is the colourway. And it reminds me of Mermaids because it's so tonal and really beautiful. And every now and again, I get a pop of bright, bright blue. And it's so pretty and I loved knitting with it. It is a DK weight sweater, so it took me longer than I was hoping it would. But that's okay, I don't mind. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say about it other than I'm so excited that it's done. So that is my one and only FO for this week. Wow. So it's not my only FO this week. I do have dressmaking FOs, which is really exciting, but I will talk about that later. I'm gonna do sections. So that was knitting FOs. So on to whips. Um, I have a few whips. Some you've seen before, some you haven't. Um, I was desperate to cast on a sweater so I have cast on the Tegna by Boyland Knitworks. I've cast on the Tegna by Boyland Knitworks. And um, this is how much I've got of it. It's not very much, it's about four rows. No, probably a bit more, maybe nine rows. Um, I think I've twisted it. <laughs> but I need to put it on a bigger loop to tell. I'm not entirely sure. But I'm really liking the lace so far. This is a Serdar um, glazed cotton. 
I'll show you it in acquisitions because I've only just bought it but it's this gorgeous turquoise colour. I'm really excited to have something that is a knitted summer garment so I really wanted to cast that on. Not much to say about it at the moment other than I'm following the chart. I've messed up the chart a couple of times um, but that's right. it'll work out in the end. Not much to show you on this so there's that one. You haven't seen that one before. Some of the ones you have seen before um, are my Cobook hat, also by Caitlin Hunter, who is Boyland Knitworks. I left that on at my mum's in Bristol, <laughs> but I've only got ribbing, so it's not really exciting for you to see. Um, same goes for my bracket hat from the Liner magazine. I have about six inches of rib. So I'm ready to start the actual pattern on this and fingers crossed I should be able to get this done fairly swiftly. This is the bracket hat, I can't remember who it's by, I'll put it below. And the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinners Dal Sutter colourway and it's their Croft uh, worsted weight, worsted or Aran, I think it's Aran weight. Here it is. It's nice knit up. It's nice and squishy. It's quite um, a bit more rustic than what I've been working on recently and it's literally just stayed in my bag at work so I could pick it up and put it down again so it's in no rush. I'm not wearing a winter hat yet. The idea is that, yeah quite like this colour, the idea is that I can fold the brim so that should be enough to have a folded brim. So not much to say on that one either. So, then I have socks. There's a fair few sock whips. One I've given up on totally is my Magnolia socks because I'm really struggling to knit three together and get the pattern correct in small needles. So um, that one's hibernating at the moment and I might go back to it. I might just cast them on maybe with a different yarn. I've been using West Yorkshire Spinners um, just their regular four ply but yeah it's not going so well same for my Hermione everyday sock now you will remember that I was knitting these on nine inch circulars and I wasn't sure whether I was gonna like the contrast of the blues together but actually it's all right I'm I'm just gonna finish them off I'm sure they'll be fine I've got loads of sock yarn I don't need to worry about one pair of socks so you saw them when they were kind of here I've now got some of the Ive Partridge heel and I keep messing it up and it keeps annoying me so I've just ripped back two rows and promptly made exactly the same mistake again which is with an Ive Partridge heel um, you are slipping and knitting on one row, then you're doing a purl, and then you're knitting and slipping on the next row, so it makes that honeycombed effect, kind of like a seed stitch I guess. Um, but I keep forgetting which ones I've slipped and which ones I've knit, and it's quite dark and I'm having trouble seeing it, so <laughs> it keeps going into more of a um, slip stitch heel, uh, slip stitch heel flap and gusset kind of slip stitch pattern rather than the eye partridge that it's meant to be. Uh, so yeah, but it's going, it's there. I just need to get the patience to finish it. I'm really loving this blue though, by the way, and I really love the stitch definition on that. Super cute. Then I have a new cast on that is not a jumper, which is my Vanilla socks, again, um, at the moment I'm not using a pattern, I'm just winging it, but I will probably use the same recipe for the everyday socks from Full and Vine that I used before. I went to Socks on the Beach in Brighton on Saturday, which was really exciting, it was really lovely, it was lovely to meet everybody. Um, I had a chat with Vicky from West Green Loft Yarns, Helen from Giddy Yarns, and a few other lovely people. And it was great to meet everybody and have a good chat about knitting. It's the first knitting meetup I've been to. I've been to lots of sewing ones, but never a knitting one. 
and Helen from Giddy Yarns is lovely and I'd already bought some stuff from her um, recently and she also had some more beautiful things so I've got some more to show you in stash enhancement from her but I didn't have anything to knit that was really simple so I opted for a casting on a vanilla sock and I knew that Helen would be there so I opted for her self striping which is her magnolia colourway it's so pretty so gorgeous and I carried this around and everyone was like what yarn are you using I need to know what yarn that is <laughs> so I said to Helen she's got to dye some more because everyone loved it so this is the magnolia colourway of self striping and I have got fairly far because it's just um, plain knitting, bit of ribbing and stuff, but it is knitting up a dream. Oh, let's get rid of some of those threads. There we go. It is knitting up a dream. It's so pretty and I'm just about, every time I start it, I'm like, oh, I've got to just get to another stripe. I just need to see the next stripe. I am knitting these on my new higher higher sharps these are size two which i think is a us zero but my god are they sharp <laughs> my finger is quite sore um i don't think you'll be able to see it i've got a little scab um they are gorgeous i love knitting with them but oh my god they hurt if you jab yourself with them um, I'm a bit concerned that this the socks might be a bit tight as well because I didn't do a super stretchy cast on and I probably should have. Um, hopefully they'll fit my feet. If not, I guess they'll have to go to somebody else. Ugh, maybe. Or I'll just re-knit them. It won't really matter. Um, yes, I can just about get it on my foot around my ankle. There's not an awful lot of stretch there. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying the higher high sharps and I really like the density of the fabric with these because it's nice and dense and apparently the denser the fabric the less um, wear and tear they will have or they'll be better at weathering it so yeah those socks are on the needles and they are really easy to just pick up and put down so that's all cool and talking of which things that I can knit without thinking um, I just remembered I've got a couple of FOs that I'd forgotten about. I was at knit night the other night and I couldn't be bothered to knit my socks and I'd picked up some Rico Rumi, which is a cotton yarn and I was going to make myself some face cloths because I use a lot of cotton buds and I feel a bit bad about the environment. So I picked up some Rico Rumi in lots of different colours and I'll show you the others in Stash Enhancement. But I just made up a pattern, really simple, and made a little garter rig, garter rig, rig and furrow. It's almost like a rig and furrow. It's sort of the same as I was doing in my row cane, but I've just put a little garter edging around it. So it's just a little um, face wipe type thing, reusable face cloth, spa cloth. Spa cloth sounds posh, doesn't it? Let's go for spa cloth. So yeah, I've made a spa cloth and I am on my second one um, out of the same ball so they're little tiny balls they're really cute um, this is the pastel pink one but I've got lots of pastel colours and I am just doing a basic seed stitch with garter border again just because it's mindless and it's easy to pick up and put down um, I'm just going to keep going with this one until I finish my ball of yarn probably I'm not far off when I put it against this one I'm about three quarters of the way yeah, about three quarters of the way on that one. So yeah, I'm going to just knit up a whole load of those. And they're super easy. Um, the yarn was like £1.60 or something, a ball. So you can get two spa cloth, spa, oh, it's hard to say. You can get two spa cloths and maybe even a diddy one, maybe some little face pads out of one ball of yarn. So actually they make really good presents. I might knit some more just as a mindless ongoing project and give some away for Christmas with a nice bar of soap or something. But yeah, so that is my second one. These are knit on my liquors, on my, these are size four, I think. Oh no, three and a halfs. I lie, three and a halfs. Um, yeah, so loving that project. That's really easy and fun. I have a lot of stash enhancement, guys. When do I ever have no stash enhancement? That's what I want to know. 
I'm going to do dye stuff first because I seem to be whipping through things quite quickly. Um, so I've been dying again and I thought I'd show you another few colourways I've come up with. They are tester ones but I really like them and I'd like to knit with them and just see what they come out like. It's all a bit of an experiment um, but I wanted to show you on the podcast because I'm not sure if I'd shown you these. I've had a go at repeating a few colourways as well. Here's a blue that I've made which I really like. There's loads of different colours in it. Yeah, really like that. So I'm going for kind of just experimenting, seeing if I can repeat the things, if they're things people like. Please let me know in the comments below if you like them as well, because um, I might have a little go at doing maybe a craft fair or something with them. Just, just for my own kind of curiosity. This is a coral orangey beauty. Really like this. These are all on um, a wool and lurex. So these are wool and lurex minis. I think they're DK weight. Um, these were super cheap so I just had to go with these. And then I've started to go for other bases. I've bought some more bases to try. And this is a bluey green turquoisey. Oh that's blowing out a bit. Probably because I'm wearing green as well, doesn't really help. That's a bit better. Yeah. So I'll show them a little bit closer. There's the corally, speckly, pretty. And the bluey one. And I had to go at this blue and I really loved this blue. So I thought I'd change it a little and make a whole skein. And so this is a DK skein and I am obsessed with it. Here it is, so this is sort of this mini, but in a in a larger skein, and without the Stellina. Oh, so pretty. Yeah, loving that. So I'm really happy with those. And I'm just gonna keep on dyeing stuff and maybe sell some stuff off later just learning at the moment, just seeing how it goes. Um, so that's it for FOs, whips and dyeing stuff. So stash enhancements. It's been a few weeks and I've had lots of orders for things um, that have come through, which is fun, but it means I've got an awful lot to show you. Some is cheap stuff, some is more expensive stuff, um, but I did a little trip with some friends to a hobby craft recently and I picked up some Women's Institute acrylics because I want to have a go at some baby knits just because I've never tried it. It's a good way of learning lots of techniques for garments and doing it quickly. So I got this. None of them... Have they got colourway things? Yes, they do. So this is Pink Fleck and this is the WI Soft and Cuddly DK quite nice gonna gloss over them they're not expensive I think that's the same one soft and cuddly and this one is pink surprisingly enough there you go I thought they would look cute together maybe as like a girl I am also desperate to make a nil of the unicorn so I thought they might be a good if I have some leftovers and then I got some I got three balls of premium acrylic DK it's making my hands hot it's makes me feel a bit blur. Um, and these are just in neutral colours. They were on three for two. So just a cream, a sort of torpy brown, and a kind of tealy blue. So they'll be perfect for baby knits. Okay, so these are the cute Rico Rumi's. These are the DK 100% cotton, and they're about £1.60 each. So I've shown you the pink one I was knitting with, which is excuse me they go into my project bag this one so I got some that and they are 100% cotton and I've got the sky blue color so this is colorway 033 not sure what the green is because the ball bands come off the gray is the 
uh, 58 colorway. So they're together, they look so cute together. And then the pink, I'm not sure what the colorway is again with the pink, but they come in like um, as many colors as you can imagine. And they are so cheap, they're one pound 60 each and it will make two cloths easy. So really happy with those. Then um, I had been waiting for some stuff from uh, Yarnbury, which is Emily Clawson from, she also has the Meanwhile at the Castle podcast with her sister Deborah. Um, and I wanted to say a shout out to them. I gave them a shout out last podcast, um, but I love Emily's yarns and I was desperate to get this colorway. So I'd actually treated myself for my birthday back in May, but it got lost along the way. But I finally got it. This is her Eat Me Drink Me colorway from Alice in Wonderland. I got two skeins. Oh, so, so gorgeous. And this is her classic sock base, 7525 merino nylon. And it's 463 yards. So there's loads there. I think it'll make a really cute shawl. So um, thank you, Emily. And thank you for being so lovely when it didn't turn up and I was freaking out a little bit. Um, I'm really in love with this. I don't, I don't know what to do with it, but I love it. Um, so on the indie dyed yarn front, I have quite a bit. Um, so you've seen the yarn berry. I also found a Bristolian, um, I'm smiling because I'm also from Bristol, <laughs> um, a Bristolian company called Bird Street Yarns and they do project bags and their yarn is called Mr B's Yarn because um, Mr B is a head teacher at a school in Bristol and he dyes the yarn. His lovely wife Claire um, makes project bags. So they've started a podcast as well. So I would go over there and show them some love. I'm sure they're Bird Street UK, um, but it's so nice to hear accents that are close to what mine was before I moved away. I moved away from Bristol when I was 19, but I lived there uh, my whole life up until then and I miss it terribly. And so it's really lovely to kind of hear accents that are really comforting to me. So thank you guys for having a lovely podcast. And um, they do it with their, I think it's Claire's sister, Bex, Becky. And so it's lovely to watch them. So just check them out if you haven't seen them before. Um, I ordered these. <laughs> I should have precursed this. Um, the precursor is... Mr B's yarns, um, I'd been stalking for a long time and I really like them, but I was like, mm, don't know if I can justify it, until he brought out a Bristolian themed <laughs> um, yarn set and I could have easily bought all four, but these two are sort of relevant to my life. So this is, uh, should I put my best Bristolian on? Picky out the stingers. All right, this is Mr B's yarn, picky out the stingers. So stingers, for those who are not of the West Country, are stinging nettles. Um, so if you'd fallen in stinging nettles, that's what that's about. Picky out the stingers. Pick him out of the stinging nettles. So it's a really good greens, browns and blues. It's really cool. And if you wanted to know how to say it, there you go. Picky out the stingers. And this is their Hiddleston base, which is 7525 Superwash Merino. And it's 425 metres per 100 grams. Uh, there's their Bird Street UK logo too. And the other one I got that was Bristolian based was Mint In It, which we say if it's good. Yeah, so it's Mint In It. So this is It's Mint In It. And it has those minty kind of, it reminds me of Spearmint Polos. <laughs> That's the kind of vibe I'm getting for this. Uh, Spearmint Polos. But yeah, it's that icy blue and a bit of purple and some speckles. Yeah. So this is also on Hiddleston. But I'm really happy with these. Thank you so much, guys, because I really love these. And you should definitely check them out because their podcast is really fun. I need to catch up because I think I've, I've been um, saving some so that I could watch them when I was feeling particularly homesick. Okay, giddy yarns. There is a few because I'd purchased some before I went to Socks on the Beach. And I purchased some after I went to Socks on the Beach and saw Helen and her amazing yarn. I don't think you'd seen Magnolia before. I don't think I showed it to you on the last podcast. I might have. I might be totally wrong. Um, but this is Magnolia, which is her self-striping from Giddy Yarns, which I love. And she had a limited edition colourway for Socks on the Beach. 
and it is called, <laughs> I seem to be going to local places really recently because I now live near Brighton and this is called Hove Actually which is a well-known saying around here. So this is Hove Actually and it's sort of a lemony yellow and a pale pink and a corally pink and a sagey blue and a sky blue. So this is her self-striping. As soon as she put that up there, I was like, I need this. This is Giddy Sock, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 464 yards. Uh, this is Helen's tag. Oh, if I can get it the right way up. And it's called Hove Actually. So I got that. I'm going to do another pair of vanilla socks. Um, I really love her self-striping. It's really fun. I know they're really intensive to do. Um, but thank you, Helen. It's really exciting. And I'd ordered a few things before I'd gone to Socks and Beach. So here's some sock sets. So this is Hydrangea, which is gorgeous peachy pink and a little bit of purple. And it's got a mini to go with it. So this will make a full pair of socks. And this is also a giddy sock. So it's uh, 232 yards on the... 50 gram and then there's 92 yards on the 20 gram so that's hydrangea and i did exactly the same with another sock set which is called 11 which is a stranger things reference to the character 11 and it's this gorgeous indigo blue with a soft pink and a soft pink mini um i tried to watch stranger things I was a complete wuss and I gave up very very quickly <laughs> within the first couple of episodes which is a bit sad I'd like to suck it up and maybe watch a few more but I knew that's what it was related to was 11. Um, yeah we bought these before so I bought these three before I went to Socks on the Beach and I bought this when I was at Socks on the Beach and I also bought this colour which is Spearmint which is the same almost the same colourway as in the Hydrangea sock set but in a larger one because I thought I'd like some more paler colours that I could include in some shawls and I have some minty green um, variegated colours and I thought it'd be good to just have a neutral-ish colour. So this is her spearmint colour and this is 100 grams so this is Giddy Sock 464 yards 425 metres. So all the giddy yarns. So thank you very much, Helen. It was a pleasure to meet you. I'm really sad that you're moving away from us because she's moving to Scotland fairly soon. But I really like it, so thank you. Um, and I will obviously be buying more of your yarns. Um, and I have Unicorn Cupcake, which we were laughing at because she was knitting it and oh my God, it's such an amazing colour. You might have seen on Instagram, I caked mine up. I also picked up some Lay Family yarn. I'd ordered her afternoon tea set for June and I'd seen some of the other ones and I was like, oh, I need this in my life because I love Lay Family yarn, as you know. The afternoon tea set is, I paid for a sock set and I'd pre-ordered some, uh, one of the tonals, which is Elephant Ears. So this is Lay Family Yarn. This is Elephant Ears. It's not showing up. It's such the, it's the softest of greys. There you go. It's a bit better. And this is Elephant Ears. This is her 7525 again. And it's 415 metres, I think, per 100 grams. But yes, I love Lay Family Yarn. And I will definitely be buying more because I love them. And the sock set that I bought was uh this month was macaron if you haven't seen it it's june so if you haven't seen it look away now don't if you haven't ordered it i'm pretty sure they're on victoria sponge now um having seen the charms so i'm definitely gonna have to order that one aren't i but this is macaron so this is last month's it's so pretty so it's like almost barely there peachy pinky gorgeousness and the little soft pink mini, which is so cute. So this is called Macaron, and she's at the moment doing her, the charms are coming from Chapel View Crafts, and I stalk her relentlessly because I love Chapel View Crafts. Um, she does little cakes and things, as stitch markers, and they are gorgeous. Um, so the Macaron one, let's see if I can keep it still, is the cutest thing I've ever seen. This is the little pink macaron. Oh, 
so cute so that came with my sock set then i ordered from um well there's a bit more of a story to this than i suppose there should be so i bought some yarn on a d-stash which i'll show you in a moment and i didn't realize that it was maria of um clementine taco and i ordered the uh, i ordered from her d-stash because she had some amazing stuff in her d-stash and then i didn't realize that she also has an etsy shop as clementine taco so i was desperate to order these and then she had a sale and i was like oh well that's just happening now and it was just at the time that her yarn had just arrived at my house which was exciting so i bought a little fudgy brownie with ice cream because clearly all of my stitch markers need to be food related now so here it is let's twist it so you can see it's handmade it is so gorgeous and you can order them with sprinkles or all those kinds of things i don't know if it's showing up very beautifully let's see if i can there you go oh it's so good even the base looks kind of fudgy and like textured super cute so i obviously have a macaron and a brownie but i also had to have this because it's a unicorn frappuccino so again let's do it that way so you can see how cute is that it is a unicorn frappuccino so i needed those stitch markers so i was really excited so now i have like a little treat selection of stitch markers really happy about those so i will be buying another ling lay family yarn uh, afternoon tea set because they are beautiful and her base is gorgeous um were two homespun house and they are old colorways so i don't know if you can get them anymore as you probably know molly is moving from germany back to the us um i already lamented about that because i bought some of her yarn directly from her last time you saw me so I saw these colours and I was like, these need to be mine. So the first one is a Gilmore Girls Club, which is the purple. I don't watch Gilmore Girls, I'm sorry to say. So I don't really get the reference. But if you do, it's called I Could Just Picture Her Gasp a Pop-Tart. Make of that what you will. I don't really know. But here it is. Oh, it's stunning. I love Molly's yarn it's stunning so beautiful so this one um is 75 25 and there's 470 yards so it's nice nice yardage so i got that one on a d stash so it's a gilmore girls club presumably that's been a little while since the gilmore girls club came out and then this one i don't know if this is still available because it's not a club it's called yesterday's laundry and this is her soft sock merino fingering and it's the same as the other one but there's blues and pinks and orange a bit of a messy skein there but you get to see the orange better so yeah this is from molly of the homespun house via somebody else's d stash so i'm really happy with those i think they would make the most dreamy shawl together i might try some brioche and i really fancy maybe using those together in some way so that is all the yarn I've bought. It's quite a lot of, no, it's not even the, all the yarn I've bought. Stevie, you have a problem. The last yarn I bought, I also bought at, well, not at Socks on the Beach. I bought it at Yak in, I bought it at Yak in Brighton. Um, I was desperate to find something to go with my Lay Family yarn, the Cornish way, which I have caked up. Um, it's, I think it could be my favorite yarn of all time. Here it is caked up. It is just stunning. This is Lay Family Yarn, the Cornish way, and it's in her Stellina sock, I think. I don't know if you can see the Stellina. It's not doing it justice. Um, yeah, but I wanted something to go with it to make a Zweig, and I said to you guys that I was going to make a Zweig. And so I went into Yak, and I was like, I'd brought this with me in a skein, and I was like, right, need to match it or work with it. And the, the speckles in it are kind of like a jammy, color so i found this. this is first this is new to me so this is life in the long grass dye studio it's hand dyed in ireland this is their fine sock which is 75 25 and it's 460 yards and this is the antique colorway it's so pretty and i bought three skeins i probably need four 
but as you can see from the amount of yarn I've bought of late, three might have to be enough. It's 460 yards, I'm sure I'll manage, but I caked some of that up ready to start as vig. So here it is caked up with this. <gasps> so this is gonna be my, oof. <laughs> so this is gonna be my yoke color, and this is gonna be my main color. And so I'm really excited to start this vig because I think it's gonna be stunning. Um, I need to finish Tegna if I haven't twisted it and I'll get annoyed with it and then I'll chuck it in the bin and start again and start one of these. So yes, these will be my Zweig. So this actually had a plan. This is the only yarn that had a plan. But yeah, so I bought that. That's Life in the Long Grass in the Antique colourway. So for all those who have been dressmaking viewers who are like, Stevie, why aren't you dressmaking anymore? Uh, Stevie is dressmaking, but it's taken her a long time to sort her life out. So I have sewing. Ah! Oh! Okay, so sewing. I have actually been sewing. Not huge amounts, don't get excited, but I have made two finished objects, albeit the same pattern. I'm taking it. Okay, so this is the Ebony Tea from Closet Case Patterns, and this is the short version, as you can probably see. So I'll stand up so you can see it. It is very short. Um, I'm wearing it with black trousers because I've just got home from work. But here you go, so this is the Ebony Tea. This is um, was a rem this was a remnant from uh, Fabric Godmother when I worked there. Um, yes, so as you can see, a little bit short. I've got a vest on underneath it, just, I would wear a darker one, but just so you can see it. This is the cropped version. I haven't hemmed it. I'm probably gonna tidy it up a little bit. But yes, um, I only had 70 centimeters for this, so I have, pieced it at the back, not that you can see in this print, I only had 70 centimetres so I had to uh, piece it to get it, but oh my gosh I've worn this so much, I really really love this top, it's perfect for warm weather because it kind of skims over from my bust, um, it's definitely got a lot of volume which I'm not normally comfortable with, um, but it drapes nicely and if I've got a vest top underneath it's not so bad if I lift my arms and I wouldn't be very comfortable having bare stomach here, but um, I'm pretty comfortable with the way that is. So with that one, I also made a second. So this is actually technically my second. My first was inspired by um, Rachel from Hey Sister, um, Hey Sister podcast. She made a purple one ages ago and I was looking at some, I was like, oh, purple. I never thought about purple. I've got some purple in my in my stash. So here you go. It's not very exciting on the hanger. This is also a shorter version, but this is not as short as my current version. And it's long sleeve, so it's more of a winter jumper than anything. Um, I like it. It fits very similarly to this. This is slightly more drapey. This is a ponty. Um, I think I got this ponty a million years ago, probably from Minerva. Can't really remember. But yes, so... It, if it wasn't 21 degrees, I would totally be modelling this for you, but I might wear it on another podcast. So this is my second ebony tea. And actually, I think the uh, promo for the ebony, she's got a purple one, hasn't she? Dress version. It's a very similar colour. Um, yeah, it sticks out a little bit on the neckline, but once I've got it on, it doesn't do that. It stretches out. So yeah, not much to say about this pattern, other than I didn't like the long length on me at all. I made it a um, sort of the t-shirt length, the regular t-shirt length, and it just didn't work for me. So I ended up hacking this one off and hemming it a lot shorter because it just, just didn't suit me, which is sad. Um, but I will make some more of these because I think the t-shirt version is really comfy and nice and I could do with a few more t-shirts in my life two ebony tees. I also have a work in progress which is a McCall's pattern. I will put the, oh, in fact I can tell you because I've got a pattern piece here. So it is McCall's 6844 which is a cardigan pattern. This is still in progress, I just need to put the um, neckband on. What I was trying to do is to um, create the Blackwood Cardi out of patterns I already own because I have thousands and thousands of patterns. And so I was like, no, I'm not buying another one. I need to just do this. So I cut one 
side of the neckband out and tried to make it fit and of course it doesn't fit and I can't be bothered to do the drafting so I ended up buying the Blackwood cardigan so you will see one of those hopefully soon maybe on the next podcast because I just need to print it out but here's this um 6844 so far it's just in a soft ponty in this kind of stone colour it's obviously not done because I just need to do the neckband um, but once the neckband's done and the hemming and stuff, it's brushed on the inside. It's, um, I would say it's a fairly stretchy cotton jersey, actually. I wouldn't say it's a ponty. It's a cotton jersey, um, slightly brushed on the inside. So it'll be lovely. I wear my um, Driftless cardigan out of bamboo jersey, which is slightly stonier, yellowier colour than this, a lot to work. So I thought this would be perfect as a kind of chuck on for work. So this is what it looks like so far. I still have a collar to put on. I could probably shorten the sleeves a little bit, but otherwise it's not much to write home about, but it is quite a useful cardigan. So I will be finished with that, hopefully by the next podcast, and you will be able to see it on. So last bit is some, um, admin i suppose we are so close to a thousand subscribers super super close so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna organize some prizes for a giveaway i will let you know next next podcast what those prizes are and um we're over 900 now which is amazing guys so thank you so much if you've subscribed or are new or have checked out the podcast and if you've checked it out before please subscribe because we are so close to doing a giveaway and i'm really excited to do that in other news i've um done a fiber share for the first time ever it's really exciting um i had two lovely ladies i opted for international so i have a parcel coming from New York and I have sent a parcel to Texas so um, you'll be finding out soon enough what I put in the box hopefully I'll get a photo back from my lovely lady and I can explain to you everything that I put in my box and I might do a live unboxing for my own fibre share so if you're interested in that I might do that on Instagram but also upload it to my YouTube channel so if you're interested in seeing an unboxing a live one um, of my fiber share parcel then please let me know in the comments below it's really really lovely to be back I feel like it's been ages it's not been that long but I'm just swimming in yarn so I'm hoping I can ease up on the uh, buying for a little while summer's coming up so I'm hoping I can do some more dyeing um, get some of this knitted up and uh, yeah get everything going for the summer because it's coming soon um, for those who don't know, I don't work in the summer, I work, I have six weeks off, which is really exciting. So I may come up with a plans video, also if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below. So don't forget you can find me on Instagram, at BB Handmade Dress. Um, you can find me on Ravelry, I've recently changed it to BB Handmade. So you can find me on Ravelry there. And of course you can find me here, and yeah, not anywhere else, I think that's it. So thank you so much for watching guys and I will see you soon. So have a great week.